long. Anyways, all right. So give me a countdown and I'll start. What's the countdown? All right. So uh, ten, nine, no, okay. <laughs> three, two, one, go. Uh, so this is Kalar and Plux. Uh, this is a 3D platformer. The main mechanic we're gonna use in the speedrun is the bunny hopping. Uh, this is intended by the dev as a bonus thing, but this was not intended for a casual playthrough. Uh, so how the bunny hopping works is that when you jump right before landing, the game won't count you as landing. So your falling speed will keep getting higher and higher, which will make your movement higher as well. So you will go zoop really fast. If, uh, so this is the first cutscene. Uh, you saw him moving. You saw her moving in the first cutscene. Uh, it won't happen again because you cannot move in the other cutscene. But we'll talk more about that later. I uh, thank you, President Freeman. Uh, but yeah, the main mechanic is the bunny hopping. If you fail a bunny hopping, you're gonna lose all your momentum. Uh, so that's really the tricky part about this game. But it's usually really fine. Even for an entry runner, you can still chain three bunny up and three bunny up. And it's still way faster than walking because walking in this game is really slow. So right now we are, we are here in the hub world. Uh, where we're gonna go back three times. Uh, there was a route change recently where we don't save the Loa in the cage and we go out of bound in the first door instead. Uh, in the past we tried going uh, above the door but we found out that we cannot go above the left side and we just gave up but someone decided recently what if there's no invisible one on the right side and they were right. So we don't have to save the Loa again and we can just enter world 1 without collecting the shard. Uh, right now he's... she... fuck, I, sorry, I need to... Uh, to keep that under control. Uh, she's climbing the wall, it's not intended. And if you go fast enough, you can use the armor to get a speed boost. It's really hard, so we're gonna do the backup and get the jetpack instead. Do you want to tell us how the jetpack works? Sure, I'll do that. So the jetpack gives us a few more moves that we can work with. It's one of three upgrades in the game uh, that you can collect. So the first thing it does, it gives you the C, uh, uh, well, a very high jump, a jetpack jump that increases basically how high you can jump. And it's higher than a double jump, so that you can reach high places. Then as you can see, you can hover with it. Uh, that increases distance you can fly over and yeah helps you traverse a lot of pits distance and lastly there's the roll and the uh, jetpack roll jump which is also going to be useful later on so yeah the jetpack gliding is the most useful thing in the game like i said each time you jump you have the chance to lose your momentum if you get a bad bunny uh upping so we're gonna try to glide as much as possible to not touch the ground and not get chance to lose our momentum. We could of course try to get it higher but it's pretty pretty hard. So gliding is just gonna be easier. So out of world 1 we just picked up the first artifact. There's gonna be 3 artifacts we need to collect to finish the game. Uh, so we're gonna head up into world 2. Fun fact, on the console version, uh, they have an older version of the game, so there's no invisible wall above the second world, and you can just completely skip world 1. Unfortunately, on PC, it's a newer version, so we have to unlock it with the artifact. So yeah, like you can see right now, we use the glide just to glide over the long surface of thing, and skipping a lot of the intended way. But here we are picking up our second item. Uh, you see, you see her moving into a cutscene. I said you could not before, but there's a trick actually to allow you to move in the cutscene. If you alt tab out of the game and back in, you can start moving in the cutscene. It just override the lock it put on your character for some reason. So you're gonna be able to just start moving again before the unskippable cutscene end. 
and reach longer distance than just waiting around for the cutscene to end. Uh, the second item, I'm gonna talk about it now. It's slow time just like what you see right now. Or it also go back in time if you activate a shrine with it. It's not really useful but we still unfortunately need it to activate this puzzle. Uh, yep. We skip the... F oh, go for it. Uh, we don't see a lot of the time orb thingy mechanics. It's similar to uh, if you played uh, Skyward Sword, the uh, back in time orb stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Here is another cutscene where we are gonna alt tab back out of the game and in, and we're gonna move into cutscene. It's an unskippable cutscene, so it's just saving time to do that and we're gonna even start the second puzzle before the cutscene end. The second puzzle teach you how to do the first puzzle but since it's so short even in a casual playthrough you forget about it and you can spend a lot of time doing the third puzzle in a casual playthrough. I can tell you about it. And so do you. Yeah. Oh, okay another cutscene. If you have a donation, that would be perfect. Uh, hi, I'm Granny. I donate five dollar because I like donating money to charity. Hi, grandson. How are you doing? Are you on TV? I see you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you reach the third puzzle. Uh, yeah. So like I said, it's really hard and casual playthrough if you don't realize that the second puzzle is teaching you how to do it. But since we know the solution by heart, it's just really easy to do. And we're gonna have a third cutscene, however it's a bit different for this one. Do you want to explain why? Really? So the third and last cutscene is quite difficult to maneuver through. Uh, you can still maneuver through the cutscene, but the problem is that uh, your movement inside of the cutscene or in general is based on your camera and because the camera and the cutscene is fixed and we cannot influence the position of the camera it's really difficult to move through especially because this camera changes uh, between different angles so i'll move to the first room uh to get at least somewhat faster somewhat closer to the exit to save a little bit of time but i will not do the entire section Especially in a marathon a sim uh, situation, because I don't want to lose the run. You can actually soft lock. So yeah, a thing we didn't talk about is the liquid in this game. They all have a dead plane, so once you touch them, uh, you get stuck in the damage animation, and then it respawn you on the ground. Uh, so if you fall into in a cutscene in the water, and it saves your position right when you take damage, you're just gonna soft lock into that damage animation and not be able to do anything. But there's a way to skip it and I'll let Maxi explain it. Alright, so, well, as I already noted earlier, the jetpack has like the jetpack jump, gliding and also roll. And figures this roll uh, animation is quite special. So what the animation does is basically it overrides different animations, including the staggering animation. So what kill planes or liquids here do is normally when you go into a liquid, you get damaged and the staggered animation plays, and then you're getting sent back to the last position where you stood still. However, if you cancel the animation, you can, oh well, basically, oh no, oh no, not again, uh, let me just focus. Alright, so this is called the armor skip. It's really hard to do because there's only two specific parts where you can stand on the armor. And you have to super jump right before it swing back because it's gonna make you fall down if you don't uh, super jump fast enough when you're on top of it. So right now we're gonna do another out of bound uh, the same way. She explained it where we're just gonna roll inside the dead plane. We're gonna save our position under that dead plane. And then we're gonna try to reach the next part of the level without stuff looking. I think you're doing you're jumping too late. That's the problem I think. Uh well I'm not having a second jump, that's the first problem. No. So because I need the second jump for more momentum. 
So this one should be better. Yeah, no, that was a little bit too early or late. Well, I'm doing the backup now. So yeah, the first version is the faster one. We have a backup. Uh, the backup doesn't get you stuck inside the wall, but sometimes it can not load properly. It's rare though. So yeah, we're gonna oh. use the backup or not. Well, we're still gonna use it. And we have time for another donation. Yes, it's you on the TV. It is just like that TV show uh, on the TV. <laughs> Sorry. <It's fine. laughs> I'm not tired, I swear. Uh, we have five dollar for. I already made that anonymous joke. Five dollar donation from anonymous. Hello. <laughs> Greetings from Germany. Long time viewer, first time donator. Love speed runs. The witches are cheating. <laughs> Alright. I no. heard this is speed cons, but this there is speed pros. Why there's only cons? <laughs> okay, I just <laughs> want to point out this run was actually pretty nutty. I need to practice the last parts of World 3 a lot more. Last time I checked, your gold was 1311. Uh, your son of this, I mean. And now it's 1303. Anyways, back up, back into character. Alright, yeah. so this is the backup. Uh, it's much safer. It's, however, also slower because you need to maneuver around. And the extra distance you travel is so much. And on a world record or like PB at my time zone around like around nine times uh you start doing the more risky and faster strats which sadly also includes resetting if it fails so yeah this is the backup right so the bang yet we can uh, get stuck inside the elevator kind of we can also uh, uh, trigger this metallic plate to create a platform for us or we can grab the ball that we almost never see in the speed run, but that happier a lot in the casual playthrough. Uh, so here, there's the third other found. Uh, it's gonna be different. It's just that they forget a hole in this wall. So we're gonna go casually inside of it, and we're gonna go to another end of the hole a bit later that they also forget. Uh, fortunately enough for us. By doing that, we're skipping a fight. The robot don't spawn uh, usually. They take like five seconds to spawn when you reach them. Then you have to beat the robot and then you have to wait for a cutscene. But we just skip all of that. And we can grab the ball right here. We're gonna destroy the factory. There's gonna be lava rising really slowly. Uh, kind of like that episode where Butter tried to drown the world with one uh, hose is open. Oh god. <laughs> but yeah. So the only case you can see the lava is looking down or falling down, pretty much. But that falling down sh would should never happen in speedrun. And if it does, that's uh, pretty bad. But yeah. Yeah, and this is also new. Uh, well, it existed since some time already, but I was really bad at doing it. But I practiced it to get consistent at this trick. And it's actually pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it. Anyway, so this is another cutscene. Uh, I'm moving in this cutscene as well. Uh, this is a gauntlet, so I need to clear and kill some enemies in it. So I'm just running ahead in the cutscene and start killing them already. So it's uh, I have already most of them killed. Once I load back in the cutscene. And I only need to kill a few more. And yeah. Ten cutscenes. <laughs> Ten cutscenes indeed. I've counted them. Uh, it's a lot. And they don't tell you that much story honestly once you watch them. It's just 
uh, tech demo kind of, at least practice your menuing. So in this game there's puzzle, there's good movement, there's menuing. Everything a speed game need. And we're gonna go into the final boss. Uh, the final boss is gonna attack you with his hand. Uh, and we're gonna use the magnet to send back the missile he sent us afterward. We're gonna then slow back the time. Uh, slow down the time, I mean. And we're gonna try to one cycle the bus by mashing button. Uh, I need to definitely practice this again because I feel like my rhythm is off for this. I'm pressing the wrong buttons for sure. And I casually play two years. More or less three or four cycle, but we only see two maximum in the speed run. And boom, dead. Time. Pretty good run. Any last word? Yes, so I'm gonna skip the cutscene so you don't get spoiled. Uh, the, 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 the amazing plot of this game, you don't want to... <laughs> okay, jokes aside. I uh, want to shout out the Scum and Bucks community, they are a bunch of lovely people. Speedrunning scene is amazing, even when we're small, they are all very welcome, very warming. The game is amazing, it's super addicting and it's super easy to get into, but it's you, you can you can improve so much. The scaling is so high up there, so this is a pretty much perfect game. It has movement, it has glitches, uh, it has menuing and it has pretty much everything you, you want to see in a speed game. Uh, yeah. Also, I want to thank you a lot for helping me out with the commentary. Uh, thanks for having me on SpeedCon, and yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, also, there is a second game coming up. And they said they keep bee hopping, so. Stay tuned for that. Nice. Yeah, SpeedCon will be interesting.